The Dodge Viper was the king of Chrysler for 25 years. It was the celebrated Halo car that no other car for the money could touch. That is, until Dodge ripped the fangs out of the snake and stuck them in the head of a Hellcat. And just like that, the track-focused supercar slayer from Detroit was dead. How did that happen? The Dodge Challenger SRT Demon was introduced in 2017 as a limited production model. And when it rolled onto the world stage in a huge cloud of noise and smoke, and then proceeded to perform a wheel-lifting launch right then and there in front of everyone, things in the muscle car world changed forever. It had unprecedented performance. It was designed specifically for drag racing, and was in its day the fastest production car in the world in terms of quarter mile time, thanks to its supercharged 6.2 liter V8 that was largely reworked from the regular Hellcat version. Roughly 62% of the bits in the Demon engine had been swapped for beefier parts, including the crankshaft, pistons, and connecting rods. 25 major components were changed to handle the extra power coming from the now 2.7 liter supercharger. 2.7! That's the same as the whole engine in our old B5 S4. And all those new parts were installed in a redesigned block that offered tighter tolerances and an improved oiling strategy. Then of course, there were the suspension and body modifications that made it lighter, tighter, and a hell of a lot faster. It all adds up to a car which produces 808 horsepower on pump gas and up to 840 horsepower on 100 octane race juice. And that's the 2017 Demon. The new 1000 horsepower 170 is even crazier. So, it's fast. But stick it on a road course and its stablemate, the Viper, eats it for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. See, unlike the Demon, the Viper was specifically engineered for track duty. It can't quite match the Demon's Unreal 2.3 second 0 to 60 time, and it won't get itself banned by the NHRA by breaking a 10 second quarter mile, Gen 5 ACR Vipers run mid 11s. But throw them both at a racetrack or a canyon road that's shaped like a wet spaghetti noodle and the Viper absolutely comes alive. Rather than a massive V8 with a massive supercharger, the Viper uses an all aluminum V10, an engine initially co-developed with Lamborghini that's mounted behind the front wheels making it technically a mid-engine car. Or a front midship, don't at me. Its 8.4 liters turn out 645 naturally aspirated horsepower and 600 pound-feet of torque, although Vipers are notoriously underrated. So scary, 120, it's so hot. In contrast to the Demon, the Viper is an exotic race car for the road, while the Challenger is just a big-bodied bruiser, albeit a very quick one. So just how exactly did we devolve from perhaps the coolest car the boys at Dodge had ever dreamt up to essentially a base Challenger with a friggin' massive engine with a pair of cheater slicks crowned as the new Halo car? To find out, we have to go back in time. Whoa, okay, not that far back. Okay, keep going, keep going, and stop. It all stems from this moment. When Dodge sunset the Gen 4 Viper in 2010, due in part to the 2007 financial crisis that ultimately led to a government bailout, it seemed like a pretty sure thing that the snake had struck for the last time. So when Ralph Gilles, Jill, Gil, Jill, Ralph, how the hell do you say your last name? I feel like we talk about your work a lot, and I don't know how to say it properly, and I f When Ralphie G bestowed upon us the all new 5th Gen SRT Viper, initial response was through the roof. Finally, a more refined, more developed Viper that wasn't only easier to live with and more accessible to drive towards the limit, but it was downright faster in every single metric. Gone was the sharper, more angular look, replaced with one that took loads of styling cues from the legendary second gen GTS that we all had on our walls as kids. It had all the right ingredients to be a huge success, and yet, nobody bought it. At the time, SRT was hitting on all cylinders, and the Viper was the new SRT poster child. But due to poor sales, they nixed the SRT namesake and for the 2014 model year, it went on sale branded a Dodge. And they discounted the car by more than 10 grand, but even that just wasn't enough. See, in 2014, Chevrolet dropped the all new C7 Corvette, and the Z06, which was just a year away, wasn't only substantially cheaper, it was easier to drive and nearly as quick as Mopar's new Serpent. It was just more accessible. And even though the Viper was an incredible value for the dollar, us young guys still couldn't afford one. And the older car guys that could pony up the cash were hit with a complete tidal wave of worthy competitors. 
This was all happening at the same time Fiat had purchased a controlling stake in the Chrysler Corporation. And while the Italians are all for building high horsepower, hugely expensive exotics, they're not so interested in losing money. And so, within SRT's walls, a new storm had started brewing. Completely separated from Team Viper, a new group of engineers and designers had started developing what would become the next high-performance hit that people would want to buy. Something that didn't have to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with other top-tier sports cars of the world, and could genuinely be used as a normal car with which you could do normal car things. It was a simple, tried-and-true formula. Like in the 60s when Ford took the best-selling Mustang that mostly sold with anemic six-cylinder engines and shoehorned a big old 429 cubic inch behemoth in it. Or when Dodge took their cute little Dart and shoved in a monster 340 cubic inch V8 between the fenders and slapped a Demon 340 nameplate on it for good measure. America loves muscle. And the nostalgia of a way too big V8 hiding under the hood of a retro-styled muscle car was exactly what the people wanted. So Dodge leaned into the idea hard by taking America's best-selling sports car and cranking it up to 11. Now, it's 2017. The Viper is still Dodge's halo car, but sales were on life support, with only 626 units being sold the year before, and every single one of them was losing FCA money. And then there was the problem of the side curtain airbags, a small detail that the engineers forgot to pencil into the design that became a requirement of all new cars sold as 2018 model years. <laughs> it's not surprising, seeing as it didn't get ABS until 2001, or traction control until 2013. There simply wasn't a good solution to get the car to meet the standard. They toyed with just hacking the roof off and skirting around regulations that way, but unfortunately, the writing was on the wall. On the flip side, the Challenger was on pace to sell a record 64,000 units that year. And while the Viper was taken to the train station... Where are we going? train station. Behind the scenes, Dodge took the same tried and true formula they used on the Dart Demon in the early 70s, but this time built up incredible hype with in-your-face teaser videos, a cameo in some Fast and Furious films, and the promise of building a groundbreaking muscle car with unmatched performance, featuring things like a trans brake, a torque reserve system, an actively cooled intercooler and adaptive suspension. The Demon was the fastest car at the drag strip, covered with a factory warranty but it was also comfortable and practical enough to use as a daily driver. It was a changing of the guard, and the hype around the Demon helped shine light on other SRT insanity too, with cars like the Jeep Trackhawk, Durango SRT 392, and Chrysler Pacifica SRT Hellcat. <laughs> well, okay, maybe not the last one, but it's not a huge stretch to imagine they toyed around with the idea. When the Viper was released in 1992 with its bold Shelby Cobra-inspired design, raw V10 power developed with the help of Lamborghini and zero nannies to save the nut behind the wheel, it was nothing short of magical. But without guys like Lee Iacocca, Bob Lutz, and Tom Gale around to greenlight projects that meant more to the brand than it did to their bottom line, something as stupid and as wonderful as the Viper was destined to fall to the wayside sooner or later. It was a car that wasn't ever really designed to make a bunch of money. See, th that wasn't the point. A Halo car's single most important job is to drive up brand excitement. Most of the time, they're the lost leaders, and as long as they're out there kicking ass and taking names on the track and in all your favorite video games, it's worth the cost. But not every CEO sees things that way. The Viper's impact on the automotive world was significant, but no one stays at the top forever. And while other American, German, Italian, and Japanese automakers benchmarked against Dodge's supercar for decades, they ultimately built competitive, more successful exotics. But Dodge knew that only America builds the best American muscle cars in the world. And no matter how hard those other automakers tried, with something like the Demon, they wouldn't be able to compete. So, what killed the Viper? Was it the airbags, the CEO, the accountants? No. It was the Challenger, and it was us dumb Americans that voted with our wallets and really did prove to the world we're perfectly happy with a car as long as it's got a big old V8 motor and a posi track. <laughs> hey, 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 I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I love a V8 rumble and a huge burnout as much as the next guy. And while I think we can all agree it's sad that the Viper is gone probably forever, the outlaw spirit of the Dodge Brothers and the boys and girls at SRT certainly isn't. With FCA, Stellantis, and the rest of the automakers trending towards EVs, 
Get the popcorn ready as we watch a new Chrysler product gear up and try to take down the current kings of the castle. It's gonna get interesting. So there we have it guys. Thanks for watching and consider subscribing to Ideal for more automotive content coming at you nearly every single day. What do you guys think? Are you glad the demons stepped in as the crown jewel of Chrysler? I want to hear your thoughts down in the comments. Go check out this video up here or this one right down here. And I'll see you all in the next one.